Hello, today you join me at Tamar Caravan Centre and I am taking out one of the bespoke camper vans, but not the one behind me, which I took out previously. This one is different. It's a different colour, it's got different units and it's the 150 DSG, but you'll have to have a look at my other video if you want to know more about that. This video is about finding out whether this Volkswagen Transporter is capable, is comfortable enough to take a family of four. Yes, all four of us are going to be going on this trip today. So let's get on and see if it's a suitable vehicle for us. So we're a few miles in to our journey and we've stopped at a service station. Not that we need to stop at a service station. We've got food, drink and toilet and everything which we need on the van, but we don't have these. Krispy Kremes. Gotta love a Krispy Kreme. One's gone already. Oliver, you've already had yours. Didn't have my favourite, so I've had to set up a chocolate dream cake. What's your favourite? But instead of just giving my views today, let's have a word with some passengers. So, Freya. Yeah? What do you think so far of this camper van? I think this camper van is very comfortable and cosy, but there's no cup holders, which I'm annoyed about, but... And the seat's comfy? Yeah. So you're happy with them and you've got mm -hmm. plenty of leg room, haven't you? Mm -hmm. There's a lot more room Space. in front of you between yeah. the front and the rear seats, isn't there? Mm-hmm. What do you like about it so far? Anything? Um, I like that there's a storage place here for my bag to go. And... Oh, so you've already put some stuff in there yeah. already, have you? What do you not like? Anything you don't like? Well, not really. I think there should be storage there, but except from the cup holders needed. I think there should be storage there. So do a lot of converters, but some of them are not actually in regulation. Freya doesn't understand that, but I will let her know why you can't always have storage above your gas hob. Shall we carry on our journey? Yeah. Let's get on. driven to the first stop of the weekend and personally I've been really happy with the comfort although I am going to be because I'm on the captain seat the driver's seat has a captain seat with the armrests as do all the transporters it is an option for the passenger and this vehicle also is a captain seat in the passenger so they do also have the armrests which I personally really think are the best option we've got some really good fuel economy for this leg of the journey albeit it has mainly been a lot of motorway miles with a few B roads and a little bit of town traffic. But we are fully loaded up for the weekend with all our gear, etc. So actually, it's probably a reasonable consumption. I'm pretty happy with that. Although more town driving and obviously traffic is going to affect that. And I'm sure we are going to encounter a lot more of that tomorrow. Passengers are comfy, as my daughter explained, but there are a few changes which I would make, but I will come onto that towards the end. But next, I'm going to show you the beds and just see how suitable it is for four people. Downstairs, so to speak, we've got a rib bed, which is a premium product. And to be honest with you, and I know it's personal preference, but I can actually sleep on this bed without a topper. But I do know that a lot of people do prefer to have a topper on there either the Panda mattress or the duvet, which is a fantastic product. It's obviously got the padding and the duvet incorporated in one. But to save space, I personally don't actually need anything additional extra to sleep on. I'll just sleep with my passenger blanket or a sleeping bag. Space-wise, it certainly isn't a king-size bed, but it is a passenger vehicle. It's a vehicle that can be used as a daily driver. It's not too big to be getting in and out of places. So you're not gonna be having a huge, great big bed. It isn't a big motorhome or a crafter, but it is suitable for a family of four. You can actually use it, even though it isn't probably the size of bed which you're actually used to. So what about up top? Well, actually up top, the bed, is actually wider because it is taken up not far off the whole size of the actual roof and also an additional benefit of the pop top in this particular conversion is it's a frolly bed board it isn't just a solid plank of wood which you get in a lot of conversions it's actually a sprung system 
and even California ocean owners have actually obviously got the slatted beds. Some of them are actually even opting for this frothy system because it is much more comfortable and you're probably sleeping on a plank of wood. This system is a really good system and it's got the memory foam mattress on top of that, the Cool Max, and it is really comfortable. But this is actually a part where this test actually failed. Now my children now are a little bit older and they don't want to be sleeping in the same room, especially not next to each other. So my son didn't actually want to sleep in here. But the purpose of it is, is size wise, you could comfortably sleep two children up there. And we know this from a couple of years ago when they were a little bit younger and they have slept in it and they both really were really keen on sleeping up there together. It is a really good camper to have for children, especially when they're a little bit younger. So that's touching on the driving and the sleeping. But what about the luggage space? Well, this van is, like I've said, has got the rib bed. So it's got the superior space behind the rear seats. The rock and roll bed has only got a very, very small amount of space. But as you can see here, this has got quite a lot of space and it's even got a divider, which is optional. This is just the part of the bed, which you can actually fold up if you just want that greater height space. It's got a couple of cupboards here. So inside this one, you've got all your water filling, your electric hookup cables. You've got your leveling ramps, your shower head, and this one, you can see here it's taken up partly with the water tank but you've actually got quite a deep amount of space where you can put things in there really useful under here you've got a secret compartment don't tell many people about that because it is a secret and then on the other side of that you've actually got a cupboard which opens up and this particular vehicle has got the portable toilet in there nice little storage for that and then on the other side you've actually got a drawer and in that drawer you've got your emergency triangle and other bits and pieces manuals and things like that but you can put anything you want in there so there's actually quite a bit of storage ah don't forget the tambour door as well there's actually part of a tambour door in there which i've just opened up to have a look and the kids have already put a lot of rubbish in there not ideal but it's a great storage area for storing your stuff now this was only a weekend day to watch a bit of football and also see family so we've not actually got the paddle boards and beach gear and wetsuits and things like that, which we would normally have if we were going away for a long weekend or even a week or two. So under normal circumstances, I probably actually have a lot more luggage in here, which would mean I might need another option. Now, obviously you can put things in between the front and the passenger seats, the rear seats, and this is absolutely fine as long as it's secure, but that's where we come across a little bit of a problem because how do you secure your luggage in that area? It's fine if it's pillows and duvets and things like that, they're not really gonna cause much harm and damage, but I've seen people put much bigger items there. Now you imagine you've got a 30 kilogram paddle board and I didn't have room for it here, so I decided to put it in there. And then you have an accident at say 70 miles an hour on the motorway and you come to a pretty much instant stop. That's a 30 kilogram missile, which could be flying around your vehicle. What's it going to hit? Who's it going to take out? It can be quite frightening. These items need to be secured. It's dangerous and illegal. And I did do another video on that, which I'll link to at the end. Think carefully how this area is utilized, but I do have an idea for this coming later. For longer stays, you might want some more storage area. And this would be a really good idea to have an awning. Now an awning, a drive away awning, you can actually put up on site and then drive away and still maintain your vehicle, but leaving a lot of your gear behind. And this also can include extra sleeping areas. It just opens up some more options. An awning is a really good thing to be taking with you. But again, that's actually gonna be, whilst you're traveling, gonna be taking up more space here. So what could you possibly do about that? Well, a great idea is to have roof bars. Now I've got roof bars on my van and I can put a roof box on there or I can put paddle boards if they're inflated and surfboards and things like that. And another option to that is actually having a tow bar on your vehicle, which again I've got, and then having something like the two lay cargo box on the back, quite a few hundred extra liters of space to actually be storing some of the bulkier items to make sure that you've got more room in your van and you are actually driving it safely. So the van is suitable for four people, but what would I change? Well, first of all, I'd have the roof bars and the tow bar to give me that expandable storage area. And secondly, or thirdly, I'd want some more USB ports. Yes, there are two USB ports down here, and there's also one in the reading light at the back, but actually, 
there isn't any over on the left hand side so i think that is something which i would spec when i'm actually getting the vehicle built and possibly another reading light that would be very useful to have over this side for the person who's sleeping on there just a couple of extra ideas and also as my daughter mentioned where do you put your drinks i mean it's okay to put that on here whilst we're actually parked up and stationary but as soon as the vehicle starts moving that could actually fall over and if it's a hot drink then well somebody could actually get scolded or something as well so it's not actually ideal so cup holders i've got an idea which i'm looking into and hopefully i'll be able to bring a video on that soon now as i mentioned unsecure loads you have a great big space here for actually storing your goods which is so appealing to be able to do so but if you've not secured them properly you could end up with a conviction or as i mentioned actually somebody could seriously become hurt we need to actually secure these loads so is there a way that the tie down points on the vehicle which obviously get hidden away when a camper van conversion is done is there a way of either accessing these or potentially where you secure the fold out table on that pillar there which a lot of people do could we actually put something there which would actually enable some security device to be able to hold the goods which we carry in the back of here I think it's definitely something worth looking into. I see a lot of dangerous packing on the Facebook groups and it is quite frightening. There's even a lot of people putting things on here. Well, obviously items on here can easily fly over. And this is even when people have got children in the back. This loads need to be secure. And if you haven't seen the video where I talk about is your van illegal, you can see that here. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon. Take care.